Hello and welcome to another episode of the Electric Norwegian. I'm not well as I'm going now into my final five days of ownership of a Tesla Model 3. My Model Y will be picked up next Friday. On this car is now past uh, within when you're done driving this will be well past 49,300 kilometers. So call it, let's call it 50. And the previous Tesla I had was what was that 66 or 60 or something like that? So I've had around well past 100,000 kilometers experience of driving the Model 3 and I've had the first one was the 2019 model and this one is 2021. Now let's go through this an experience of the owner and also as a used car and how are they to live with? I just washed the car. Uh, the rinsed off, it was dirty and awful. Um, I was planning to vacuum it, but the vacuum they have at the um, petrol station was out of order, so I sadly haven't been able to do that. Really. So, what you see is what you get, as it were. Uh, I haven't cleaned the car out either. Um, I intend to do that when I get a new one and I can go through everything and see, okay, we haven't had this one, we don't need to sew away and all of that stuff. Sort things to, to when we get there, as it were. But anyway, this is a, I guess it's now just called a Moultrie. It's a standard range plus, it's where we drive, it has the 50, 50 or 55 kilowatt hour battery pack. It has a real world range of around 300 kilometers in the motorway in, in, in the summer and around 400 kilometers on Norwegian country roads in the summer as well. With time it does somewhere between 200 and 300 kilometers depending on speed and all the usual stuff. Now today it's minus it's 3 degrees, it's a beautiful late winter's day, let's call it it's March, so yeah. Uh, the Energy graph with an average of 169 watt hours per kilometer claims 298 kilometers of range. So let's call it 300. The previous Tesla was a long range, so it had two motors, it had four wheel drive, it had more power, it had a bigger battery, and theory it had a longer range. But the thing is, I had an Ionic before this. An Ionic, the old Ionic, still is one of the most energy efficient cars. It's just stupidly efficient. So I knew what a heat pump can do to a car. And the Tesla didn't have one. It had a, a, a PTC heater, a heat element. Basically the same heaven in an electric oven. There's nothing wrong with that. It works. It heats the air up. You get very nice and open and all of that. But it's rather inefficient in the way that, it, it, in the sense that it uses a lot of energy on heating up stuff and, and you don't really get very much range out of that. So in practice, in the real world, the range of this car wasn't that much different from the range of the old 2019 long range. Of this with my driver's side of where I live and so on. There's a lot of motor driving around here, so a lot of high speed driving, so yeah. But one thing the Moldry always has been is very energy efficient. And when they finally got around to make a heat pump, the Octo Valve, which is uh, the most amazing heat pump system yet uh, made, with the possible exception of the, of the um, Lucid. It really made a difference. This car can run, even when it thundered through Germany last year, it still ran sub 200 watt hours, and we were going fast and hard. I don't think you can do that in any other car. Maybe the way we drive I-4. But they will have uh, they will have other issues. Uh, uh, they will have heat issues, which will cut power. This doesn't. It never got very hot. It just found it on, even though it was 40 degrees outside. So the HVAC in this is very, very competent and very energy efficient. And even now, on the cold day, like there, okay, we're just pulling around for the traffic. We're still running 155 watt hours now, which is basically nothing. So with the Model Y, even though the Model Y is a very, very efficient car, it won't do what this do. It, it, in Denmark in summer with 
around around 100 watt hours per kilometer, which gives this car with a relatively small battery pack a range of 500 kilometers. If it kept those 100 watt hours per kilometer average all the way through, which is absurd. I think this has a 50 or 55 kilowatt hour battery pack, I can't remember exactly which. So it's, it's a small battery, but it does a lot with that battery pack. Um, I don't think any other car can go as far as this can on the same amount of energy. The only thing that pips it is the old Ionic, but the old Ionic has a smaller battery and a lower range. So, have I had any problems with any of the two Teslas I've had so far? Nothing massive. The previous one, which was made in three months, it was, was still pretty early in the yeah, early in the uh, step up of production of Model 3. They were still not fully out of the woods with problems, and I think Giga Changa didn't exist yet. Giga Berlin wasn't ex did not exist, and all of that. But this car, this car built in. Uh, built in China is much better put together than the old car. Even I don't really care about care about uh, stuff such as panel gaps or what part is colored or not as long as it looks okay. You can see that instantly that wow this is put together on a different level entirely. And everything is this paint where it's supposed to be paint and everything is fit properly together and so on. Um, it still has a few strange rattles, particularly even now when it's cold in the morning and the car heats up. I think it's different materials being uh, 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 moving slightly differently to each other, so you make, it makes make different noises. And then everything gets warm through and it all settles and it's fine. Other than the interior quality here, everything you touch, it's fine, it feels fine, it's, it's Telcatara, it's leather, or plate leather, but it feels good, the plastic is, is well, apart from the dashboard bit, which is atrociously cheap, but don't touch it and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is a nice place to be, it, it isn't nearly, I never got, understood why they got so much flack from the interior, because it's not nearly as bad as some people like you to believe. Have you sat in the nerve of the DZ4X fax machine, for instance? It's atrociously bad. Um, or the BMW iX3, which is so full of uh, um, uh, piano black plastics that you go bananas trying to keep it clean. The building quality has improved and problems. Well, the, the, the blue one uh, had a few issues. None of them were major. They were all minor issues. There were like a clip had broken the door, so they fixed that. Uh, had changed a, a light because of some, some, some moisture, I think. There was some neat niggles like that, but they were all taken care of. No problems at all. This one, Soon done 55 kilometers, no issues, zero, zip, nada. Having a big fat zero on the on the on the upkeep account as well. Apart from filling uh, with the washing fluid on it and, and charging it, that's all you do. Now it needs a few now it needs a new set of tires next year, but that's okay. Uh, probably needs a brake service, because it's been a few years. But it'd be no issue. I have the cracked windscreen, but that's because of a stone chip. And through during that work, Tesla also mucked up this glass, so they had to change that as well. But I got a, got a rental car, I got a old model less performance, so I did not complain at all. In fact, I fell in love with this, but that's how it is. That's they, they, we have a video on that, go and watch it. Previously, I've always been saying you don't really need more than 300 kilometers of range in your life, mostly. And that's true, I still stand by that. Particularly if you make things efficient. Don't throw big batteries and stuff, make it efficient. And then you can make, use the batteries to increase range if you need it. If it's a van, for instance, or a pickup truck, or something that will be used heavily and hard. Um, if you throw a trailer on this, it will use more energy, yes. But that's how it is with everything. So you then you just generally just cut the cut the range in half. And it works 
fine. No wrong to do for the six more times. Just fun to see that things being so efficient. Is the red prone to stone chips? Well, it's no more prone to stone chips than anything else, but you see them better because they go through to the white, white layer below it, so of course they, they should stick out more than if the car itself was white. But that's, I wanted to splash out on the red color, and I did, and part of me wanted to splash out on the new red color from Berlin. Well, why? But it's curiously expensive. One of the letdowns of the Model 3 is the, the seats. They're very comfortable. The, 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 the uh, pillow is a little bit short, it could have been a bit longer. But it works. That's not the, the Tesla is the, alone about having that problem. Um, the Model Y has they redesigned the seats, so you have more support in those seats, so they're better in that regard. This is a, a medium sporty saloon car, after all, so it's supposed to be. You, you can't really chuck it about. The steering room reminds me in some ways of the old 156 I had out from here. Well, it doesn't have the L and L the same feel, feedback. The front the Alpha was fabulous, and it really talked to you, so I knew exactly what the front wheels were doing. This doesn't. It communicates to you, but not nearly as much. But the steering is quick. Two turns come to lock. The, the, the turning circle is slightly atrocious, but it, you, you know, it, you get used to it. It's um, designed in California, after all, so you can't get it. This looks like a Model 3, and it looks fabulous in this red color. I love the red. This hair has got a few chips on the side. And those are not a windmill, those are some sex wheels for the winter tires. They look rather good, I think. And it is at some angles, it's, it's really slightly cool, I must say, if you compare it to the Boxster. And Porsche, we see the design similarities to it. Apart from the fact that the Model 3 looks huge besides it, but that's a different matter. And particularly this red with the black accent, it's, it's, oh, it's so nice. And you have this thing here, like for instance, you have, it's, it's frozen, integrated like this. There's no big hatch, no big openings in the, in the bodywork, it's just well integrated. It's wonderful even, and it closes from its own accord. And then the new, from 2021, you have the opening here. Yes, it's a mess, I know. Deep well. Um, but it's a lot of luggage space in this, and they also have space down here. So it's more space than you think. You can put the seats down if you want long things into it. It's not the most spacious back seats in the world. The seats need some cleaning, but they hold up pretty okay. After I haven't used them very much, but still, they've been used a bit uh, this year. Like I said, there's Alcantara hair, leather, the nice feel of this button. You and the feedback of it is really instant and nice. And this this panel here. This sounds atrocious and cheap, and so does this. This is okay. This is nice. It's slightly padded. But you don't have to fiddle with it because it's so far away from you. Sit all the way back here. Small steering wheel. Very nice. The old ones were leather clad. This is clad with the same uh, pleather, fake leather, that's the rest of the interior, but it, it still feels okay, but the leather steering wheels have a different feel and a different surface to them. Natural, they would, of course, as a different material. Screen, we all know that, I don't, I won't go through it here. And I love this thing here, why can't all cars have this? Dual, dual chargers like this. And the car is away, the phone is away from you, you don't reach it, you don't use it, it's safe and nice. And all of this storage, storage, cup holders, cabins in the back, big door pockets. Um, What's that now? Glove. Fairly okay glove compartment. And here you have your cards are back here. Yeah. Yes, that's a sensor fault. It's been like that since I put the way the dice on. Can't be bothered to fix it, really. 
and you have hair short shorts for your uh, stuff you can put it in the outdoor if you want you can change temperature like this you can use this you can use your voice of their updates is just no one has really got f fathomed the depth of, of the software like this but just came with this it's so comprehensive and it comes with tips for you it tells you so much since last charge and, and if you're on a trip you can put it on a trip you can tell you since in park how much is used on climate and, and heating and all of that mobile app so if you want to nerd into this you can or you can just put the energy graph on and have fun it's it's one of the best experiences uh, on a screen you can have in a car really and you have this big expansive glass because in the model Y this is gone probably will have been the three over time as well probably I have to stiffen this up somewhere somehow uh, but it really is less than so much light it, and, and, and um, uh, in the model in, in the blue model 3 I had that part of it blacked out and it was it became so dark in here I don't want to do that again really and also here you see why I'm always banging on about the, the uh, my front because all the things you have in the car the with the washer fluid, spray bottles, gloves, all that stuff. You never really know what to put, but you put them in the front or you put them in the well in the back or something. But that's, that, that, that's why I'm always on about it. Why I think it's just standard and all that. The i3 is now discontinued, sadly. It's, 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 it, it, it's a 10 year old design, but that in the front. It was a tiny car. It still is a tiny car. It's a brilliant car in many ways. Is the screen distracting? No. I mean, yes, if you use it as a tool and try and type on it. Of course it's distracting. I'm going to stop where that sign is, darling. The sign is put behind the zebra. Oh, well. But you don't do that. You plot on it now and then. When you need to, you put your pod on. And this place, and you do everything. You glance at it. Like you glance at anything else. And and, 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 and and you set your temperature to auto, it stays on 20 degrees around the air. It's not a problem, it really isn't an issue. Uh, this, this, this thing, screen is distracting, it's just, there's a myth and a bottom line a lie. If the user interface is well designed, if it's poorly designed, well, then that's of course something else entirely then it can be distracting and dangerous. Tesla's user, user interface most of the time is very, very well thought out. And, 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 and you have on the steering wheel, you have controllers for your media and your sources. And most, let's face it, that's what most of us use. You put the radio on, you, you control the volume, maybe you skip a song and you're done. So, and that's physical buttons on the steering wheel. So it's not really that dangerous. Um, and then, and for your, your 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 nav, you can use your voice, or you can you can put it in with the uh, on the screen. Of course, then you, maybe sometimes yes, you have to stop, but it's not really that big of an issue. Most of the time, it works with voice control. Why isn't this thing turning green? Ah, thank you. And the power drain. I can kick it. You can hear that beautiful sound of the rear motor spinning up there. Ah, this one. Trying to run the one model. It's quicker than the newer rear wheel drive car. It has more range. It's closer to 500 kilometers. Because it has a bigger battery pack. It's a 60 kilowatt hours. This is 50 usable, I think. But it's slower. Well, this does not do 60 or not 100 kilometers in around five and a half seconds. That one does it in 6.1 or something. Um, and the st the, the, then I standardize the motors, I think. Um, so this is mo more power, slightly more power. But because it's a single motor, it's so smooth in its power delivery. The whole test is smart. 
just as us girls, they're proud of everything. But this one in particular, eh? because it doesn't grab you and shakes you like the, uh, like the four-wheel drive models can do. This one is always linear, but it's just so smooth. It's quick, but it's just so much more pleasant in a way. Um, do you need more power than this? No. No. I've been saying that for a while that around 300 horse is sort of is the limit. It's a magic place. It's, it's very because you have enough power to get up to speed and and do safe uh, um, bypasses of other cars or something. And yeah, you don't really have too much power, but you have. It, it is just nice. It's just uh, just enough. You can have more power. Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Of course it is. It's even more effortless. This is this is effortless. The Model X plan was is probably the most effortless car the car I ever driven. Of course it is. It is a thousand horses. It's, it's, it's silly. But you don't need it. But as we all know, we don't need the car they either. They still exist. So that's how it is. You don't need the Porsche 911 either. Really. But they exist. And that's how we humans are. We do things not because we're we are we are logical beings because we want to because we desire it somehow. Why do I have the old Porsche? Why do I have the Jag? Because I think it's fun. Not because I need them in any way, sense or form. Because of the experience. Some people buy a boat. You know, you do what you want. But this is a sporty, fun car. And it is fun, and you can throw it about properly if you want to. And it is really quick as a point to point car. It's a quick steering rack, not the most communicative steering in the entire world. You have to go to BMW or Jag for that, and Porsche. It can really be hustled down a road very, very quickly indeed. Consumption wise, if you drive it on momentum and you don't kick it all the time, it's still very efficient. So you, you can still have your cake and eat it, and it's just brilliant. You never really run out of cake. Most of the problems you read about in these cars are they're cosmetic, the panel gaps or the their paint is related. Now Tesla's also got around to fitting mud flaps on them, so they don't chew up their own their own uh, uh, um, fenders. Uh, in the winter, when you have, if you have some stone chips and stuff, that that, that can then tend to rust and so on. And there've been some problems with with bonnets that doesn't want to open, and, and the motors that st stops working, and windows that doesn't want to go down or up, and stuff like that. Door handles can freeze. And you saw that now uh, when it was wet because it was just washing. And it is cold outside. They can't have to freeze, but it's not. You can just you just bonk it, you just hit them. Or sometimes if you re if you preheat the car and you tell it uh, to throw up the car, it will run heating through some channels around both the door handles and also the charge port. So you will it will release them. It's supposed to do anyway. Tesla have been improving and finding solutions to problems and they keep on getting the cars getting better and better. So do they have the more issues than other cars? No, I don't think so. I think they have less issues over time. If you look at Kia Hyundai, they still have 12 volt batteries dying. That's a big issue. On both the Ironic 5 and also the old Ionic, you can then think, well, okay, this does have that as well, but they've sort of sold that now. They've done with that. That's a problem of the past for most cars. Yes, cars will have issues, but it's like one in what? One in a thousand? One in a one in hundred? One in ten? That's, that's the number you have to look at. Noise. We're now cruising at a nice speed of the um, down the open country road, enjoying the car, enjoying the sunshine. There is some noise in there, yes. Most of that is wind noise. Sometimes noise. Uh, the wind noise... Well, you have a split in the roof right above my, right above my head when the two panels are built down. And glass panels like this always induce noise. Because they're a joint. 
they are opening in the in the in the body of the car, that you then have to try and seal properly. And either if you're if you're a Volvo or whatever you are, you will have When you make an opening in the car and you seal it again, you will have a potential for uh, um, inducing problems in the car. In this case, you induce more noise. You do the same thing in the Volvo. Any, any car with a with a glass roof, you can often have a tendency of having more more wind noise in the cabin, particularly in tunnels. You know that they can be very noisy in tunnels, some more than others. This Tesla is quieter than the previous one I had, partly because of the double basic of the doors, but also because of generally they've become better at insulating the car um, noise wise. Will they ever become as good as the Germans? No, probably not. But it, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Ultimately, it really doesn't, because they're not that noisy. The problem in Europe. Particularly is that we've grown up with BMWs and Audis, which have you used the last 20 years to insulate the driver from the road, insulate the driver from the noise, insulate the driver from the noise of the road and of the experience of driving, and also from the noise of the engine. And when well, they build electric cars, they keep on that trend, so they make very quiet cars and very confident cars. But if you want an Audi, then you buy an Audi, or a Mac, or a Bima. Um, now they be maybe they're better cars, but they're not as good as they're not as good as they are. Maybe they are better cars, but they're not as good electric cars. There's a difference there, in the sense that. The efficiency of the Tesla, the range of the Tesla, and the software, the app for instance in this car, always works. Maybe there has been two days in the entire, what is it now, four years that I've owned Teslas that, 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 that are down. Sometimes they can have difficulty in contact with the car and you can't breathe, it, okay, it happens. The headlights are good. Are there better headlights out there? Yes. Again, they're from the Germans, mostly. But these are still very, very good. If you look at the competitor, the Kia EV6 and so on, that, in some of its, some of its uh, guys, sold trim levels, are still sold with halogen headlights, which are atrociously bad. Here you get autopilot standard. You get. Uh, full LED headlights, which are very, very good, decent range, decent spread, all of that stuff. If you want more light of this, you have to buy a bar, a light bar. You get those. That's not a problem. There are plenty of people who want to give you one for a price. But for most people, driving like I do, mostly urban and so on, uh, it's not a problem. You have very good lights. Mirrors are good. Well, Rare, uh, rare view is awful, awful in the test, not just of the uh, line of sight backwards, but you have a very good cameras, so it's sort of fine. If you have big teenagers or you lug around, lug around on big animals, get them on less, or get them on legs, or get them on the wire, or get something else. But having own both a 2019 and a 2021 model are saying that it's easier to be efficient than this car with the heat pump. That comes from, comes from 2021 onwards than in the older cars because of the, the lack of heat pump. Is that a problem? Not necessarily. There is probably a little bit more range to have in the old long range. It has a bigger battery after all. It's probably more efficient and it charges faster too. And now with the V3 charges, this one can. The, the long range with the big battery can really utilize the V3 charge network in a different way than this can. Simply because there's a bigger battery.
about your budget. So if you're going to do really, really long distances, you need four-wheel drive, or you just enjoy more power, because it's a very quick car. It has 450, 470 horses, whatever the pedal. That was your wheel, really. Tesla never gives you those, so you just have to do guesstimations. There is noise here, yes. But it's not that bad. In fact, I think we will have the Volvo the X XC40, or the, the, the coupe version of that. I think that was noisier than this is. So Teslas aren't as bad as its reputation. If you come from if you come from a C class or an A6, yes, this will be noisier. If you come from a Hyundai or whatever, a uh, 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 Toyota or something, this will be perfectly fine for you. Yes, I have to raise my voice a little bit. I'm aware of that, but still. And the seats are good, and then you have the autopilot system, which is the best uh, level 2 safety system there is. It, it is just getting better and better. It's not flawless, but it's still better than mostly all the competitors most of the time. And that's what is important. If it makes a mistake now and then, okay. Everything does that. But it keeps you in your lane. It is become, it's become very, very smooth time when it comes to oncoming traffic, traffic cutting in front of you, and so on, and doing those kind of calculations. Sometimes, if it's a badly marked road, it can do strange things, and Tesla still haven't gotten everything up and going with new cars that doesn't have uh, this car, spark sensors, and ultrasonics, and so on, but they will get there, it's a matter of time. Do you need to pay for the FSD in Europe? No, it doesn't. It's still it's still not regulated in here. I don't really see the point of it yet. But that's up to you. It's your it's your money. In Europe, I would say no. Do you need to pay for the enhanced autopilot like this has? What does it do? Now I put the blinkers on. Gives you resistance to the steering wheel. Car changes the lens. And then car the blinkers. And I'm in the lane. Now, if I didn't have have a, have it on autopilot, I had to do that myself and then re-engage autopilot. Not a big problem in my book. Some people say, "Well, the C-class can change, let you change this and then engage it by itself." Yes, it's a match. It's, it's a design choice. It's not the hardship with this thing on the roof at all, actually. Um, it also gives you automatic parking and, and a few other things I never really use. So I don't see that. I bought it on this one, I won't buy it on the other one. I haven't bought it on the Y. I don't really see that. It's not that much of an added value in my book. But that's my perception of things. You have yours, and again, it's your money. You buy what you need. Now it never gets to money. You can't list it. Put in the supercharger so it tells tell me where to stop and when to stop and how long to stop. I know other cars are the same thing. I still don't think they do it quite as well. That said, this one has become, Tesla has become very, very um, um, difficult now with their, the way they calculate these things because now it suddenly wants me to stop. First stop with 44, no, with 63% less in the battery. Why? That's just stupid. And then 12, 16, 15. And that's fine. 12, 16, 15, 5, 17. That's perfectly alright. Why the name of Jesus? 63%. That's just, you just sail past that, you meet up with someone else and you with you 15% of the time, whatever you want. Sometimes it's a bit conservative, but most of the time it does a very, very good job. And it also starts creating whatever it needs to. 
does all this for you. So it does, if you come from a petrol car, a combustion car, Tesla does the transition very, very easy because it does so much for you. It, 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 it does all the thinking for you. You have to learn a few things, but then most of the things mostly just works. Also, the supercharged network has a almost always space for you there. It's always working, very, very seldom has some downtime. Um, they're constantly being built out and updated. Mostly, some of the old locations won't be updated, but that's fine. Then they build a new one a bit down the road or up the road or whatever. Some of the old locations are placed in stupid places like behind a hotel in the middle of nowhere where there's nothing to do. But that's a bit improving over there. So. And it is in Europe where the Model Y, also the new Model S, actually, all the deserts now has CCS plug as a standard. You can use any charger anywhere in Europe, no problems. Unlike in America land where Tesla's being stupid and insist on using your own plug and being idiotic about it, instead of just transitioning. But that's how it is. Um, you can say, yeah, well, the Tesla plug is easier and prettier, and yeah, but that's irrelevant, that's not the point. That's not the point. When they were designing this, Tesla didn't have a choice, they had to make their own stuff. They made a brilliant design. Yeah, no one discusses that. But in Europe we land on CCS. We, we run with that, and that's how it is. End of discussion. It's all in the name of making the easiest possible life for the, for the end user, the consumer of the product, which is me in this case. We have done now 84 kilometers, and we have a consumption of 70 watt hours since we charged. The Fender Graph, which calculates over the last 50 kilometers, says 167 watt hours and a range of 215 kilometers. Like I said, around 300 on a road trip like this, mixed roads. On the way today, it's fully achievable. Less if you drive faster and so on. Insert variation here. And also, bad noise issue. This is, in, this is in Norway. We have very rough tarmac in Norway and Sweden. <coughs> I have never been to Finland, maybe that's the same thing. I don't know. I don't know about Canada either. But if you're in Denmark, France, part of Germany, insert whatever country you live in, you don't necessarily have the same noise issues from the tires and the road noise that we have here. So a lot of what I talk about is irrelevant for you. Just as a side note, now you know that. It's important to think, uh, to just so you don't think. If, if, you go, if I go to France, for instance, or Denmark with this car, the noise levels in the cabin are completely different. With some wind noise, most of the road noise will be just gone, vanished, won't exist. It's, it's just really, when you look at it from a continental perspective, this is a very competent car. It isn't that noisy as road tests will make you believe, particularly not when we have no reason road tests. Of the of the sound is very good indeed. It's better than a lot of other cars. If you come back to this car after you've driven a, a bunch of other cars in the same price range, you realize how good the clear the sound actually is. They have a some problems sometimes just with the mids and the highs, but I don't know if 
confused with or else so have some let out somehow. Uh, but but apart from that, it really is very good. Particularly given that there is no name to this one. There's not Kef, there's not it's not Bullmaster, it's not it's not uh, Harman Kardon, it's nothing like that. And I don't know where the sort where the sort of elements and builds it for them or but it's very very well put together. And then the long range version, or and the performance, where you have all the speakers included, including a subwoofer. It's even, you, have, you never really lack for sound in the Tesla. That's the thing. And of course, it is a bit of a noisy environment, at least. Yeah, on this lane it's particularly bad because the surface area, surface area is awful. So you don't really need a blue master sound system anyway because all the details will just drown out by the droning. So it doesn't, it's a, in France though, the situation would be a different story entirely. Um, but we're not in France, sadly. Will I miss the Mold Rick? Yes, actually I will, particularly this one. Uh, can I say it's worth looking at in a used car? Yes, I can. I think that's it for now. We, you can eat. <laughs> We're gonna hit our hit our target numbers anyway. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.